One of the biggest challenges to adding translations into your app is making sure the translated text makes sense in the context that it's used. It's difficult to just take a word in isolation without any additional context and translate it correctly. So for example, if you take the word menu in English and you translate it to French or Spanish, well, there's two words for that. There's either a menu for kind of a, a website navigation or there's the menu for a restaurant menu. So it's really important to understand the context and able to translate the words correctly. Now, if you're using Crowdin, there are already a few tools to help the translators understand the context better, such as adding comments onto the strings or even uploading screenshots. But there's one tool that's especially helpful and that's something called Crowdin in Context. Crowdin in Context is a tool that essentially adds an overlay onto your application that allows translators to use your application directly and translate things in real time. And this, of course, gives in the best context possible. So let's have a quick look at how this works. If you head over to demo.crowdin.com and you just select any language, I'm just gonna keep it on Afrikaans just now, it's gonna take you to the Crowdin homepage. And this has already been integrated with Crowdin in context, but you can see there's a bit of extra things going on. And this is basically how you run the translation. So if I go to any one of these strings and I just uh, hit the edit icon, I can see the, the source string and I can just start translating here directly. And if I just move this to the side, you can see translating text that this is updating in real time um, with all the context available. And also it kind of shows you things such as the kind of the spatial awareness and just how it's gonna look. So this is kind of the, the most context you can get when translating an app. And of course, if I just go ahead and save this and you know change languages and do my workflow in here, it's gonna update my crowd and project. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you how to integrate the in-context tool into your app. It's very simple, just two steps. Uh, and yeah, let's get right into it. So for this, I'm just gonna be using an example from a framework called Lingui, and this is just a create React app. Uh, In-context tool is technology agnostic, so it will work for any framework, any technology. All you need is access to the index.html file, uh, and then you're good. So I've got the app here on the left-hand side. I'll go over that in a moment, and I've just got it running on the right-hand side. All this does is we have an English and a Czech uh, button. This is just the, the two translations that happen to, to be there right now. And if you click on either one of them, it's just basically going to swap uh, and actually place the translation. So we're going to assume you already got some sort of translation set up. And one other thing worth pointing out here is that the translations here we're using is the .po file. So you can see here we have messages.po for English and Czech. We have an ID and a string for the English. And if I head over to the Czech one, it's the same ID with a slightly different string, but of course this will work on different uh, translation formats as well. So step number one, let's create a Crowdin project and enable Crowdin in context. So I'm just gonna head over to my Crowdin uh, profile. I'm gonna create a new project here. I'm just gonna name it in context tutorial. Then I'm gonna scroll down and pick a couple of languages. So let's just pick uh, French here and uh, German doesn't really matter which languages we pick now. This is just for a demo project. I'm just gonna create that right there. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload my source uh, file. So I'm just gonna head over to my English messages.po and I'm just gonna upload that. So that's gonna act as the source file for all the strings. And then I'm gonna head over to my tools section, click into in context, and I'm just gonna enable in context translations. Next up, we're going to select uh, a pseudo language. Now this is an important concept here. A pseudo language is basically kind of a, a template language that's gonna add identifiers into your application so that the in context tool can work. Now it's important to note that when you pick a pseudo language, you should try to choose a language that you don't need translated because it's gonna be taken as this kind of template language. So uh, I'm just gonna keep it on, um, I guess I'll just use Afrikaans over here. So I'm just gonna assume I don't need the Afrikaans language and therefore this is gonna be my pseudo language. This is gonna be the one that's set up with these fake identifiers um, so that I can use the in context tool. I'm gonna to scroll down, I'm gonna hit build and download. And it's gonna move this aside. That's gonna give me a, a PO file with all the right identifiers. So if I just uh, open up, I think it's gonna be this one here. And I'm just gonna unzip this file over here. And the only thing I'm gonna take here is the Afrikaans messages. And I'm just gonna pop that. Uh, actually, I'll just take this entire directory and pop it into the locales. So that's all we need to do on the Crowdin setup side. Next up, you just need to add the language on your actual app. So in my case, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna head over to the Lingui config file. I'm just gonna add in the Afrikaans and I think that was a um, AF language code. So I'm just gonna add in, come here, uh, AF, and then I'm gonna head over to my i18n TS file. So this is basically what creates the buttons on my React app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in the AF locale. And then I'm just gonna add in, well, I could add in Afrikaans, but because this isn't a real language, like I said, this is a kind of a pseudo language, I'm just gonna, uh, put in the text uh, in context tool. So we can see the in context tool button here on the right hand side. And if I just click that just now, 
you can see that we've loaded some sort of weird identifiers and these are just coming from the uh, messages PO file uh, over here. These are the identifiers that in context is going to use to be able to load and kind of manage the, the translations. So there is one final thing that I forgot to do. So I'm just going to head over back to the crowd and app and I'm just going to copy over this script. So this is the uh, JavaScript um, snippet that's going to basically allow all of this to work. I'm going to head over to my index.html file and I'm just going to uh, pop it in here. And then I'm going to head over back to my React app. Hopefully just refresh this and you can see straight away the crowd in context tool is just automatically working. So if I click on the in context tool, which loads in those weird identifiers, well, this basically this JavaScript snippet is able to load it in and connect it to our project. So let's see what happens if I click on this edit button, uh, brings up the, the language here. Let me just expand this uh, so it's full screen. You can see the uh, source string here like we did earlier on and we can start editing straight away. So that's all we need to do to incorporate in context tools. So if I hit save here, well actually in context is gonna tell me, hey, look, something looks a bit off of this. There should be a, a colon at the end. So I'm just gonna auto fix that. Hit save again, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Another one, and I'm gonna add colon after that, save again. Basically, you know, this is the typical flow. You can see that the ones that have been edited are blue. The ones that haven't been edited are red. I'm gonna close this. Um, you've got this little widget here at the bottom left, which I haven't talked about too much, but you, this just basically gives you all the strings that are available. You can kind of come in and take screenshots or you can go in and change the config uh, and the text here. Um, final thing, if I head over back to the In Context app and I scroll up to the dashboard, what you can see is because I've translated a couple of the words in French using the In Context tool, you can see here that they've been translated, uh, jumped to 13%. So if I click into this and head over to the uh, two texts that I translated, you can see that this is basically the, the workflow working uh, as expected. And that's it. That's how easy it is to set up in context tools. So there's a few things I should add here. Number one, I was of course uploading and downloading files manually. Usually you can use something like the Crowd and CLI to automate all of this um, on your CI servers. And that way you don't need to kind of fidget with things locally. Number two, if you're paying external translators, there's a good chance that they're going to want to charge more when using a tool like in context and that's of course for two main reasons firstly it's much better quality and therefore it costs a bit more and second of all this basically bypasses the specialized workflows that uh, translators have been building up over for a while they need to learn your app to, to, to add translations so i think that additional cost is justified and with that being said it's not uncommon to just have in context tool working on your kind of most important pages. So it doesn't need to be uh, available for your entire app, just the most important ones that require the most context and then everything else can use the, the standard translations. And the final thing to note here is it's common for companies to add in context tool into a different non-production environment. Cool, so I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I will see you in the next one.